Cool. Yeah, let's do it. All right. That way we both get back to Forza. <laughs> no lie, no lie, no lie. All right. Well, welcome to another episode of Behind Them Sticks with your boy Ham Solo. I am with my very special guest, Wilmy Hood. How are you doing today, bud? I am doing fine, sir. How about yourself? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I'm really excited to have you on the show. I uh, got several questions for you, some that you may have heard before from previous episodes and also a few new ones to kick out. So um, to get everything started, let me go on ahead and ask you what gaming and social media platforms do you use so maybe people can get a hold of you or check out more of your content? Go ahead and shoot. Oh, oh God, you can find me everywhere. Uh, literally, I do mean that everywhere. You can find me on YouTube, Gaming Beyond the Box. You can find me on Facebook at Wilmy Hood. You can find me there under Wilmy Hood, GBTB Nation. You can find me on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok. I mean, dude, we're we're everywhere. Where's your Twitter. primary focus, though? Twitter. Twitter? And Twitter and YouTube. I don't really spend much time on Facebook. I'm most, I'm most people. Facebook sucks. Yeah, it does. I haven't been there for, well, I mean, I, I still go there and check it out and like, I'll post stuff every once in a while, but uh, it, it fell off. Like it just isn't yeah, what, it, what it used to be for me. Yeah, you, you, I don't know. It's just, it's bad. Yeah, it's kind of sad just, when you go on there because you, you get to scroll and you see some stuff and you're just like, ah, this is not yeah. the energy that I want right now. <laughs> exactly. That's why I don't mess with it much. I go on there, post a few things and back back out. That's it. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about your show, like gaming outside the box. Tell uh, t tell some of these viewers what they have in store when checking <laughs> out that show. Gaming beyond the box is exactly what it sounds like. We uh, we we don't we're not exclusive to any console or platform. We we basically just love to talk games and talk a lot of shit, and we do talk a lot of shit, and I mean a lot. Um, oh, yeah. We try to make it entertaining because. I learned early on most podcasts are exactly the same and you know it's kind of hard for me personally i get bored easily and for me it's hard to listen to a podcast for two hours there i mean it really is most of them are exactly the same they regurgitate the same shit over and over we figured out a way kind of well number one we didn't want to be fake you know there's so many people that make content when you talk to them on a camera, they're a completely different person in the real world. We wanted Fair. to show you exactly how we are in reality. We're a group of friends. It's just like, it's, it's like a big party, you know, a podcast. I mean, it's, it's like a big Xbox party. We just laugh, we joke around and we just have fun. And you get tired of all the, I would say the, uh, you know, negativity sales and negativity draws attention. We all know that 100, but we try to stay away from all that. And we didn't want to participate in it. Matter of fact, we got what we call the NFP, the fanboy neutering program. <laughs> so we don't tolerate fanboyism whatsoever. If you watch the show, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. We just hate it. There's nothing worse in the gaming community, period. And we just try to make it fun. We try to make everybody have fun and forget about shit for two hours. And we managed to talk about some games in between. Most of the time anyway. But that's been our primary focus. And we've been going two and a half years. We're almost to 19,000 subscribers. So it's not doing too bad, but I guess it could be better. Fuck yeah, man. That's awesome. Congratulations. Cause that's a, uh, that's a lot of people checking out your content. It See actually kind of shocks me. My wife one afternoon was sitting around. She was just bored. And she typed in Gaming Beyond the Box into Google. And all these sites started popping up. We're like, holy shit, we're in German. We're in Italian. Holy shit. I don't know how they translated my Southern accent into all these different languages. But hey, more power to them. <laughs> so, That's badass, yeah. though, man. Worldwide. It's everywhere. Yeah, Worldwide. we got a lot of followers just doing the audio. 
So, because we're on Spotify, Amazon, Google, Apple, all those. We get a lot of people through there, too. Well, shoot, man. I hope to be there one day. That'd be super dope. What made you uh, agree to be on here? I'm, I was super stoked when you agreed. Oh, dude. I don't, <laughs> to me, like, if you're creating content, you're creating content. I don't care how big you are or how small you are. Oh. I remember when it just five people watched us. Right. I mean, you know, we had the bad part. All five of them were us. And nobody would say anything in the chat because we didn't want each other to know it was us. <laughs> so, I mean, it looks kind of weird when you're sitting there chatting to yourself. Absolutely. But, so, so definitely to all the people, anybody that's watching this, that's thinking about possibly creating content someday. We've all been through it. I'm currently going through it and I just don't give a damn. And that's the whole thing about it is just like, just keep going, keep plugging away. The more you give exactly. a damn about what everybody else thinks or oh man, I don't want to have a few bad comments. Man, you're going to have a lot of catch. bad comments. Fuck that, that. That is the catch. <laughs> you're you're going to have, dude, I don't care what you talk about, you're always going to have those. Always. If I talk about a PlayStation game during a podcast, because I own everything. I play everything. Right. If I talk about a PlayStation game, I'll get you know comments from Xbox fanboys in our chat. If I talk about an Xbox game, we get them from the PlayStation fans. PC, same thing. Yeah, man. But They're like gnats, said, man. They're like fucking gnats. They are. <laughs> but when you, when you quit worrying about all that shit, just do you, then you go on. And that's the easiest way to do it. Don't yep. And don't be fake. People can spot a fake. And there's a lot of fakes in, the, in YouTube in general. I've met a lot a whole lot but people can spot it man if you're if you're exactly who you say you are people will come to you because there's a ton of creators and i don't even call myself a content creator anyway i'm just an asshole with a microphone <laughs> so I like that I like that description um yeah i mean i got into creating just because i mean i i personally got tired of just seeing so much bullshit on like twitter and just people oh it's fine and and so like i was like man if i'm gonna use a platform like this and i'm gonna spend so much time on it because i spend more time on it than i'd like to admit but like if i'm gonna spend this kind of time on it maybe i should like be promoting myself instead of listening to all this garbage going around so like i don't know i decided to use it for my own personal benefit uh whether it'll benefit me a ton in the out and in, in, you know down the road or not is still to be you know determined but as of right now i'm having a blast with it i'm having a blast meeting new people gaming i've met several uh content creators and just awesome gamers like some of them aren't, aren't even content creators they're just dope ass yeah. people and they seem like assholes when they're on twitter but then i have this <laughs> show i have this show where i try to get to know who they are so not only am i figuring out who they are but my viewers are actually able to go back and say, all right, well, this person Maybe is an so asshole, bad. but he's a pretty cool yeah. asshole. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's my whole point of- And some people feel like they have to have a persona. Mm, yes. Know, spe especially online, dude, it's, it's annoying. It, it's not professional wrestling. You don't have to be a heel and you don't have to be a hero. You know, it's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm past that at my age, I don't know. Well, it's some people, my thing, yeah, you know, I just don't give a fuck. That's it. And I'm the same way in the real world. That's the beauty of it. So love it. All right. Well, moving on, I don't even know why I'm going to ask you this, but just so the people uh, <laughs> that are watching the show know, what are you playing right now? <laughs> hmm, gee, I don't know. Forza, Silly question. Forza Horizons 5, I do believe. <laughs> And yeah. Far Cry 6. Okay. So how are you liking Far Cry? Because I'm sure you're Dude. loving it. Or is it? Far, it's my favorite Far Cry of all of them. Really? Oh, yeah. The game is just, it's hilarious. It's it, it's great. 60 frames. I mean, dude, there's nothing you can't love about Far Cry. It looks so amazing, So it's not just too. the same old regurgitation of the last Far Cry for you? But see, that's the catch. That's why I like Far Cry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, I've, I've played them all, dude. 
And oh, man. I, I've loved them all. So, you said Primal. I never played Primal. But, you know, I, I was looking forward to Far Cry 6, and I've not been disappointed. That's what I was telling people is like, they're like, oh, it's like just the same thing. I'm like, you're right. That's why it's number six. Well, think about <laughs> it. Look at, look at, look at movies. Look at music. What are you seeing unique anywhere else? Yeah. They're about to come out with a new home alone. What do you think that's going to be about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and music is just as bad. Oh, and so I almost movies. like music is worse because you'll have several different artists creating the same song yep and then the funny part you know all my kids are grown but they're all in their 20s and the funniest part you know my oldest she's 27 she's gonna go dad i heard this song you know and blah 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 and sweetheart ozzy did that same song back in 84 oh and she has no idea but you know a lot of it's just regurgitation i hear you um that's pretty uh, man, yeah, I mean, that's pretty annoying. It gets old hearing the same crap all the time, especially when you've been through the time a little bit, and you're like, oh. So this is the number one song out right now. I remember when it was the number one song out when it was the original. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. And if you live long enough, you get to see everything come around full circle. For sure. So um, let's go into gaming a little bit deeper now. Like, why is it important to you? Why did you make a, you know, YouTube and all this stuff revolving around gaming and stuff like that? Oh God, I've been a gamer dude since gaming wasn't cool. Um, back in the eighties, <laughs> gamers were as low down on the totem pole as you could get. You were right there with the kids that played Dungeon and Dragons, you know, in the, in the library after school. Um, I think the first thing I played was a Commodore. No, actually Pong. Pong. Yeah, it's Pong. I'm 48, dude. I've been with the like, with the uh, twist with the twist. Oh yeah, that's yeah. the only way it came. And you know, it just it was always a thing. Um, when I got older, you know, you would move to Atari and all those, and it was just always I don't know. It always caught my attention. I remember the arcades. You see, most people missed it in the 80s. Arcades are the best. Go there, hang out, watch people get shot, you know, play games. You know, people drinking in the back, pass them out in the dumpster. <laughs> but that's not a joke. But, arcades you know, were like dying. We're, uh, arcades were like dying when I was growing up. Um, like pretty much like already almost dead when I was growing up. Cause I'm like, th I'm 33 years old. So I was, in, I was born in the late 80s, and by the time I started to go to, you know, mm -hmm. different arcades and whatnot, like, it was either massive arcades that were owned by big businesses. There were no, like, small, just, like, right. kicking it arcades. It was always these kind of uh, oversized arcades that were really expensive and parents didn't like to take us to. <laughs> but, I mean, that was that was awesome, though. All you and all your friends would go there, get together, you know, just play games. Play Galaga, you know, the different racing games. Ooh, Cruising USA, about. bro. Cruising USA oh, yeah. was my jam. Yep. I mean, you could just play everything. And from there, dude, it just kind of grew. Always had a thing for games. And Game Beyond the Box, it's kind of funny how it came about. Um, I was a admin for a Facebook group. And it was the largest Xbox group on Facebook at the time. I think we had almost a hundred thousand members Jesus. and somebody had mentioned to me one day, maybe doing a podcast. And I was like, I don't know, man. I don't, I didn't like the idea of it, but we did one and it was entertaining. You know, it, it wasn't too bad. Well, somebody had made the comment. Oh, you're Southern dude. Nobody ever listened to you. Well, that's what put it into motion. Because if you, I'm the type of person, if you tell me I can't do something, oh, I'm going to rub it in your face. Because I'm going to do it. And I did. And it was, uh, it was interesting in the beginning because some of my admins for this Facebook group were the panel members. They were boring. Really boring. And uh, if you've listened to my show, 
we've had the same members for two years or more. Like we got Fork, Leo, Bomber, Ghost, and all these guys. I met them kind of by accident and asked them to be on the show one night. <laughs> the, the sad part was I was talking to my admin, you know, like, what are we going to do, you know, as far as topics for the next podcast? I think we should discuss DLC and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, that's kind of boring. They're like, <laughs> well, I think we should do it. So they wanted to be I the made, news. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, so here's what we'll do. We're going to split the time. I was like, cause I got four new people that want to come on the show. I'm gonna give you guys the first hour. And then I'm gonna give them the second hour. And that's what I did at 8 PM. We started the show and you can still find it on the channel. <laughs> you gotta go all the way back through hundreds of videos mm -hmm. and <laughs> they had one hour. They shot their shot and it was boring as hell. I got up, walked away, went and played some gears five or something and came back and then me ghost fork leo and bomber all got together on the microphones for the first time and that's when it clicked i knew at that moment and they did too that we meshed together we got along very well together and we played off each other and the rest is kind of youtube history i guess but it all started because somebody told me I could not do it. And that was my driving force. So what was like the kind of like content that you guys brought to the show that made it more exciting compared to what that like the very kind of boring, this is what's coming out this week. <laughs> like oh, what God, were you guys dude, doing? We've, we've, <laughs> we've, had, we've, we've had everything from Fork's wife walk in and slap the shit out of him during the live <laughs> show. We've had Huss drunk doing cartwheels. Um, mask costumes skits i mean you name it dude we've done it i've had youtube actually you know demonetize quite a few of our shows i mean but it is what it is we don't do it for money so we don't care right that's but, what's up but, but yeah we've had everything happen dude so that's I mean, like your just, guys's few hours of just fucking around exactly that's it <laughs> it's just it's just a bunch of friends getting together blowing off steam for the week talking about games and just letting it all go and it's worked so oh. it's really worked out all right well we better get on to our next question because because that got that was a hell of a story but uh, i don't want to keep too many too, too many people's minds or uh keep too much time for people um i know my last few episodes were like almost two hours and i was just like man i feel bad for some people that are just trying to like peep in and check out who a person is oh, yeah. and they have to sit there for fucking two hours to see who the person even is and i'm really so, not that special <laughs> i don't know i i told a couple people uh who i was talking to tonight and they got super stoked so uh you, you definitely um you definitely I have a following hit. yeah but the thing is dude just it, it's it's the not giving a fuck that's the thing dude and if more people are that way the world be happy for sure <laughs> for sure man too many people caring about things that don't fucking matter um but anyways um what i guess i kind of already asked you that question but um let's hop to the next one uh what was the most memorable moment for you in gaming oh god honestly the legend of zelda the original Zelda is always one of my favorite games. Always will be. Me and a bunch of my friends spent all weekend. We did not sleep. And we defeated the game. The first weekend it came out. Jeez. We all stayed at my friend Brian's house. <laughs> we drank so much soda. I'm surprised <laughs> we survived the so weekend. Much soda. Yeah. I mean, dude. Well, I mean, we were young and we were like 15. Right. What else could we drink? Uh, but we stayed up from Friday night till fucking Sunday afternoon and just played through Zelda. There were four of us. And to this day, and the funny part, people don't believe it. I'm 48. I can still sit down and play through Zelda in one playthrough and know where everything is. That stuck to you like glue. Oh, it, it has. 
because my son thought I was crazy. And one day I sat down and showed him. I yeah, can still sit down and play all the way through it, dude. With don't one test character. your elder, man. Don't <laughs> test the it. elder. Oh, man, that's what's up. Um, is there any other games that, like, are just insane? The first Gears of War. You remember they were giving out that achievement for the first, if you hit 10,000 kills in online multiplayer? I didn't know. No. I wasn't you, an achievement got, hunter then at all. Well, you got a little omen for your avatar, and you had to have 10,000 online kills in ranked matches. Ooh. Me and one of the guys on my panel, we were the first, we were in the first five people to get that achievement. So y'all were grinding like a mug. Oh yeah. Like losing oh, yeah. sleep. <laughs> oh, definitely. And at the time I had three I had three small kids at home too. Oh man. So, so you were just living on that game for a moment. That's how I kind of feel that much. Been on Forza the last couple of days. I feel ah, like I've been me listening. too. I've been living was, in Mexico. I was playing Forza in my sleep last night. <laughs> All right, man. Well, um, next question. This is going to be fun. Um, I, I do this game kind of every show. Um, so I'm going to name a console, and I want you to name the first game that pops into your mind. It doesn't yeah. matter if it is multi-platform or not. It's just the first game that comes to mind to you gotcha. when you think about uh, console. So I'm going to kick it off with, um, oh, oh, before I kick it off, are you pretty well known with a lot of different consoles? I missed out on a couple because I was in the military. Okay. So I'm going to start it off with kind of a banger. Like, hmm, Panasonic 3 do That was one of my missed. Okay, miss on that one. <laughs> um, Dreamcast. Dreamcast, oh my god, the uh, what's it called? Crazy Taxi, yes, such a good game. Original PlayStation, is funny. Oh, Jesus, Final Fantasy. I don't remember which one, but I used to play a lot of Final Fantasy on the PlayStation. Okay, a lot. And there was another game called Tecmo's Deception. Not sure if you're familiar with that one. No, I'm not. <laughs> Do you know Legends of the Gaia? <laughs> Yes, but Deception, you were in a castle and it was up to you to trap people and to torture them inside the castle. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was pretty crazy, dude. And the bad part, I stayed up all night because I didn't realize I did not have a memory card. Oh, no. Save my progress, so I had to stay up and complete the entire game. Yes, that reminds me of the days where I, I literally left my PlayStation on because I didn't have a memory card. So I just shut off the yep. TV. I'd unplug the, the, the cords in the back, just leave the power plugged yep. in and just let it just sit all night. And, and put a little sticky note on there. Do not turn off. You're right. <laughs> For real. Um, all right. Next, um, next console, Super Nintendo. D. D? Mm-hmm. It's a vampire game. Oh, I'd never heard of that before. Just I'm a, I'm a huge horror nut, dude. All right, GameCube. Hmm. I'm trying to think of one. There's one I play with my son all the time. God, I can't think of the name of it. Pikmin. Yep, there's yeah. Pikmin. My, yep. my minute. I played that with my son all the time. All right. Hey, just one second. My daughter, just one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, we locked that we, we locked that door so my so like when I'm doing videos, my daughter can't just open the door and just run out here because she will. <laughs> How old uh, is she? <laughs> she's uh three years old. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's that she's, age. Yeah, she does not um, have a filter, nor does nope. she really care if you say don't do that. She'll do Oh yeah, that's the way it works. <laughs> but anyways, um going back at it, you said D and then Pikmin. Pikmin was for GameCube. So now we're going to move on to PS2. Final Fantasy 7. Final Fantasy 7. All right. One of, one of many, dude, because Jesus Christ, I had so many games for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> so many. Original Xbox. The original Xbox? 
Oh my god. Uh, what the fuck was it called? Oh, I played the shit out of it. Morrowind was one. Because I love Morrowind. Um, here's another game. Dave Mira. I think it was Freestyle Mira, or something. Me, freestyle BMX. Me and, my wife, me and my wife, dude, you sit and play that shit for hours. <laughs> me and too. hours. Because <laughs> Morrowind would put her to sleep. I tell you. Like, and it had a super dope soundtrack in that game. Yes, so it you did. could just kick it and just you play could, it all had day. Sublime. Yes. Sublime was in there. All kinds of stuff, man. That was one of the best soundtrack video games. That and um, I remember Tony Hawk Underground had a really good. Um, the very first Underground had really good mm -hmm. soundtrack as well. Um, I was gonna throw this in there. I, um, one of my favorite Xbox original games. I'm not sure if you ever played it, but Conflict Desert Storm. Yep, conflict Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Those were my two. Of yeah, like, see, I had this weird games. thing though with Desert Storm because I was actually in it. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, fair enough. So you're just like, uh, I don't want to go back to that. Actually, it doesn't really bother me. Sometimes it does, but very rare. Okay. Real stuff, though. Real stuff. All right, moving back on. Um, Xbox 360. Gears of War. Gears of War, just the original. Mm -hmm. All right. PS3. PS3 would probably be Mag and Last of Us. Very good choices. And then the last one I'm going to go with is Nintendo 64. Hmm. I don't really think I played much on the Nintendo 64. I kind of gave up on Nintendo. Really? Mm hmm. Do you care to elaborate? I just, I don't get into it at all. Not your type of games. Got it. Dude, I've got a Switch I haven't been turned on in three years. Fair. I've got a Switch. I've got two Switch lights. And they never get turned on. I have so. two regular like Switches, and one of them just has is collecting dust in my bedroom. The other one's in my daughter's room because she likes to play Pokemon. So that's what's going on with my Switches. So I, I, I get it. And the OLED wasn't really that uh, intriguing to get. It was only like... Nah. It, it, it's literally just an OLED screen that changed. So. That's it. So My was... phone still got better resolution. <laughs> All right. So um, moving on to the next thing. Um, what gaming genre do you flat out refuse to play? JRPGs. JRPGs. Is there a reason just, behind that? I just can't. It's, I just can't get into them. I just cannot do it. Fair reason. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've tried. Other than Final Fantasy, it just... And I really got bored with Final Fantasy after 10. Okay. So I just... I don't know, man. I just, I've just i tried to get into a couple of them, and I just... They don't interest me at all. Have you tried out Scarlet Nexus at all? Because that's kind of a new one. I did. One. I did. And I don't do anime. Oh, okay. Or any of that stuff. So it just... It kind of goes right over my head fair okay yeah so if you don't do anime you're definitely not going to give a damn about scarlet nexus at all um all right well then what's the best three games then that you have for this last year and then out of those games what's the god resident evil village far cry 6 and of course forza horizon 5 and Forza what Horizons, dude. <laughs> it's it's probably gonna be Horizons because the game just I mean I mean in all fairness it doesn't end. Mm-hmm. You see the last one, four, I played that shit for years after it came out. And still went back to it. Man, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've already I'm already a hundred and something level and there's still just so much stuff to do. Oh, there's do. tons. It's it, it's you... exhausting. You have to like, like for me personally, I clear my map and select like one thing at a time. That's what I started doing this afternoon. Because I've been playing that shit, dude, since Saturday morning. <laughs> I've been yeah, sitting man. around in sweatpants all weekend. It was nice. God, but it's like, it, like, like, I don't know how most people feel, but it gives me that like, Ubisoft, like over, like so much stuff on the map. Like, 
uh, yeah. like, I got too much to do. So I like have to like take everything off the map and be like, I want to do this. Well, there's so much, you kind of <laughs> have to do that. So you can see, see what you're actually looking for. Mm, facts. All right. So of those three games, you're picking Forza, right? Yeah. Okay. Even though That's I played dope. Resident Evil, I played through Resident Evil five times. Damn. I played through it twice on my PS5, once on my PlayStation, and twice on PC. So you said once on your P twice through on your PS5, and then I'm guessing you meant to say like Xbox, or did you say Yeah, Xbox and PC. Okay, Xbox and I tri PC. I triple dipped. Jesus. You must love that freaking game to have oh, bought dude. it three different I ways. I did. <laughs> you reviewed the living hell out of <laughs> Oh, I did. That's awesome. Um, but what's your favorite studio of all time? And then what's mm. like the best game that kind of represents those that, that studio? Hmm. That's a tough one. I'm going to have to say Beyond Two Souls was the game. I think that was Quantic Dream, wasn't it? I think it was have you ever played beyond two souls nope on the ps3 nope i didn't i actually did not have a ps3 or ps4 i was completely xbox that's because all i could afford the the storytelling and just the gameplay was completely unique from anything else um that but then again i'm a big ubisoft fan too I really like Ubisoft. I really don't care much for Assassin's Creed. Me but, neither. <laughs> nah, but, dog. You know, it's too long for me, man. I really like the last uh, shit. Uh, what's the name of it? It just came out last year. Uh, uh, Mortal Phoenix Rising? Or... I really like that one. That was unique. Dude, that was fire. Uh, I love that game. And then the uh, London game. Oh, oh, um, oh, you're talking about Watch Dogs. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. I like that one. You liked that game. You're one of the few people yeah. that I hear say that they like that. But see, it's Ubisoft. They always have, you know what you're going to get. Fair. I mean, you always know what you're going to get. But then Far Cry, that's Ubisoft too. Mm -hmm. so, I've actually felt like I've been standing up for Ubisoft because a lot of people are complaining, oh, all Ubisoft does is make the same games and their, their, uh, their formula is just so boring. And I'm just like, bro like look around at all of the you know all of the people making games right now who's been constantly coming out with games ubisoft ubisoft phoenix, has not stopped and phoenix rising dude that shit was awesome yeah i mean it, it was, was better it than was zelda as hell. oh god yes it was fun as hell and it was complete i wasn't even going to buy it at first and then I started, you know, a couple of friends of mine were playing and I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna have to check this one out. And I beat it, went back, played through it again. Yeah, man, Ubisoft has the best deals too. They'll just randomly just cut their game in half. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I mean, well, the thing is too, you know, I, I do like some games, you know, you want short and sweet. Right. You know, a 10, 15 hour game, that's fine. Sometimes you just want something a little bit longer. Mm. So they have choices. Those dry times. Oh yeah. They definitely got that. So I, yeah. So did you pick your favorite game of them all? It would probably be Far Cry. Okay. The Far Cry series. That represents together. it the best for you. Got it. Because I've played all of them. Except Primal. Except Primal. Yep. So what's maybe your most excited game for like the next year, but I'm gonna switch this question up for you specifically. I want you to tell me what's the most exciting game you got coming for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, because I know you're gonna mess around with them all. Oh yeah. Oh God. Hmm. I know February is stacked. Dude, uh, I'm gonna <laughs> be broke in February. <laughs> Oh God, um, Dying Light Two mm. is a definite. That's definitely Horizon Forbidden West. 
That's a definite. And I don't know. So Just dying lights for which one? I'll play that on Xbox. Okay. And Horizon Forbidden West, of course, on PS5. Yep. And then PC. Probably on PC too. Okay. I'm actually surprised you didn't say like Redfall or Star no, no, Field. Redfall. I don't know. I don't know what. See, those are so far out. Fair. And you really don't even know what Starfield is. That's true. And I mean, or I've Red got Fall, high yeah. hopes for it, but now Redfall is definitely on that list. But I don't know when it's coming out either. It may be next year. It may be the year after. What? For which one? For Redfall. Now, I thought Redfall was supposed to come out next year at some point. It was supposed to. Okay. Yeah, but you, you know, you know I mean, what there's supposed to means nowadays. Shifted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of stuff's been shifted. Yeah, like Halo was supposed to come out. God of War was supposed to already be out. I think Horizon was supposed to already be out. Like mm-hmm. all the games that are coming out next year were supposed to be out already. I think. Yeah, so Horizon really... Forbidden West is supposed to be out sometime this month. I think. Yeah. Originally. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I think it was, and then they got yeah, it got pushed back to February. Um. But yeah. This is going to be kind of fun. I just kind of want to know. I also ask this question on a lot of the episodes that I have. What are two games of all time that you would like to bring back and say, hey, I'm going to completely remake you from scratch? Fear. Fear? Okay. Fear and the suffering. Bro, not the suffering. That game is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Fear and the suffering. Oh, man. For bring, as old as that game Alma. is, it is terrifying to this day. Bring back Alma, please. Oh, I would man. kill for a new Fear game. You are nuts to ask to bring that game back. Oh, man. Oh, dude, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I love those games. scared out your shoes, man. I'm good on that. I'm not into horror like that. You try oh, to I am. That. See, luckily you can't see everything around me in this room. Oh, man, I'm so I've got, curious. I've got statues everywhere. Freddy Krueger's, Jason, all of them, they're all in this room. I don't mind the movies as much as the as the video game. <laughs> it's the video game horror things that... Because the movies don't really scare me that much. Like I, I Like, I anticipate movies, like to scare me in certain parts a little bit more than I do when I'm fully immersed in a video game. And I'm like looking hard at the TV, like every, like, like, like in send you a sacrifice. It freaked me out a few times. Cause I got people talking in my ears. I can barely see it's smoky. And I'm like, whoa, go, like walking through water. Yeah. That was, I mean, if that was scary for me, then, you know, you, you can kind you of, can, you can play some of the games I got on my PC. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got some good ones on PC. I remember when I was a little kid, Devil, or not Devil May Cry, uh, what is it called? Not Devil May Cry at all. Um, Max Payne. I was a little kid when that oh, game yeah. came out on PC. And that following the blood trail of like a baby was in freaking insane. That was on another level oh, yeah. of uncomfortable for me. But um, speaking of uncomfortable, what frustrates you about the gaming community? If anything, <laughs> fanboys it's my biggest pet peeve it really is they're just so obnoxious there's people in the community dude that just suck the enjoyment out of everything and anything just because they can do it and it really is annoying that's why we have the fmp so Go on ahead and let everybody know what that means one more time. It's the, it. it's the fan the fanboy neutering program, <laughs> and that's why that's that's our motto. I just I don't understand the mindset. I don't I really don't understand it. Do you have like a collection of just like people that you're like this is just I've like got a hundred that you dodge? I have a hundred and eleven thousand people blocked on Twitter. Wow. Wow. Now that you interacted with you know, a lot of people. That also includes, you know, your your ads and all that stuff too, but yeah, if it's a fanboy, block. 
Oh my God. Oh my goodness. I swear, whenever I look on Twitter and I see something that you posted, nine times out of 10, I'm laughing at it. It's just see, absolutely ridiculous. That is the whole point, man. To make people forget about the bullshit for at least a couple of minutes. <laughs> make people laugh. Life's short. Trust me. I'm sitting here. I'm 48. I feel like a week ago I was 24. You know, it, it goes that fast. Um, my co-host, I'm pretty sure you've talked to him several times before. Loke. L- yeah. L- Loke 7. He absolutely was ecstatic when I told him that I was having an interview with you. He's like, I love that guy. That guy is absolutely hilarious. Really fun and good dude. Have a good time with him. And I was like, I'm hoping to. And so far, so oh, good, yeah. man. I've yeah, had dude, a really I'm, good time. I'm as laid back as it can get. Super dope, man. Very happy to have you here today. But um, what do you do outside of gaming? I'm like, what do you do in everyday life other than work? Like, what do you enjoy? That's all I do <laughs> outside of gaming. I do have a grandson. He's a year old. Congratulations. Oh, man, he's awesome. You've probably seen me post pictures of him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's a pretty big hobby. Yeah, <laughs> so I busy see hobby. Oh, yeah, he's everywhere. But uh, other than that, I really don't do much besides work. I gave up on classic and antique cars a long time ago. Okay. You used to be a builder or just a collector? Collector. I got tired of it. The What's the dopest car a... you had? Oh, God. It was a 76 Camaro with a 396 under the hood, nitrous, all that good stuff. Man. And you gave that up. Mm-hmm. And along with the 54 Chevy pickup. And you had some beauties in your time. Yep. Now I just have my big, my overly sized Jeep. Okay. My wife had the midlife crisis. She's got the Camaro Super Sport. <laughs> You're like, I'm done with vehicles. Enjoy yourself. I'm sure you've Pretty had much. plenty to scoff and like, I don't know. Did you used to go to like the... Any kind car of shows. like car shows. Yeah. Car shows and was, stuff like I that. I was big into car shows, went through all that shit. The hydraulics, sound systems, you name it. Did you do like any Americruises or anything like that? But very few. I would go up. They had this big one up in Charlotte every year at the Motor Speedway. I went there a few times, some local. And it just, I don't know. It got boring. Sure. I, I mean, up. you're repeating yourself a lot, I'm sure, about, <laughs> oh, yeah, the car, this and that, and the third, and then you're like, oh, yeah. all right, this is getting And old. then you're worried about somebody hitting it. Sitting on it or all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. and it, you can throw some money into one real fast. Real fast. I get that. All right, so one of my last questions for you today is... What's something that nobody really knows about you that you are comfortable with sharing? Hmm. Damn, I don't think there's anything I haven't shared. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, no, no, I can't think of anything. No. Yeah, there is one thing. I like to watch paranormal shows just to watch the people you know, just to laugh at the people. <laughs> well, there's a show that comes on. It's called Paranormal Caught on Tape. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's no, hilarious I, to me. No, I haven't. I've seen something called Paranormal Activity, but I think that was a movie back in the day. Yeah, it was a movie. This is a show that comes on several times a week. If you're a ghost hunter, bring me something besides dust to make me think it's a ghost. <laughs> and if you're a ghost hunter, you're six foot four, 300 pounds, and you bench press 800 pounds, don't scream like a girl when the floor creaks. You know what I mean? Mm. It's just weird. It sounds really and typical. I get a kick out of watching them because I, I, I don't believe in ghosts or any of that shit. I just watch them the people re- react. And the funny part is, I love watching them try to explain it. Like, yeah, you can tell that's a ghost. Really, Bob? That's a that's a piece of dirt. 
you know, it's they got the facts, the the facts, right? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like fanboys, you know. It's not real, but they're trying to convince you it is. So, other than that, that's about it. And I do get a kick out of those shows because some of them are just hilarious to watch. Was that a UFO? Oh yeah, that was a UFO. You could tell because back in 1977, there was this guy and he had a photograph. This is what it looked like. It looked just like this one. And you know, <laughs> that's fake as fuck, dude. <laughs> you can see the little string hanging on top of it. But I don't know, that's it. I'm pretty boring. No, boring is sometimes healthy. So it's okay to be boring sometimes. I know my life isn't other than, you know, making this content here and, you know, raising my daughter and hanging out with my lady. I mean, I don't really do a whole well, lot of other things. I've raised all three of my kids. They've all went through college. My son works at EA making video games. Dope. I have a grandson. I've been to a lot of countries I don't care to pronounce anymore. So, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm happy with gaming and working. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> so then my last question to you is, or it's not even a really a question. It's what I want you to do. I want you to describe gaming in three words. Need more time. <laughs> All right. There That's so super many real. Games, there's so many games <laughs> coming out, man. Like we got Battlefield in, in a, what? 11 days? Yes. Something like that? Yes. Then we got Halo coming. Yes. Uh, then February. Yeah, February is just like a horror month right now. Luckily, luckily <laughs> I own my own company, so I can call in sick and nobody can, you know, nobody can argue. Right. So, but yeah, it's. You I called in sick time. for a week. <laughs> What's going on? But I just need more time. Because, like I said, this weekend was the first time I've had a chance to play a game in two weeks. Mm. And you've been tied I've been up. On the go. Yeah, I've been on the go from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. at night. So. Jeez Louise. Well, I'm happy you're able to play some Forza and get down on that for a little while. Um, I'm not oh, sure man, what your next several break. days look like, but but um, you should amazing. definitely you should definitely dive into that as, as far as you can for a while because... Before you know it, Battlefield's going to be here. Grand Theft Auto's going to be here. Uh, I don't get into GTA. Okay. But I got tired of them after San Andreas. Yeah, I mean, it's the same games coming back. Yeah. So, so, I mean, if you played them before, fair. There's no reason to dive back I played into them the all. same game. But um, I'm I'm excited because I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how well they redid it, even though their hands are still looking kind of like that. <laughs> it's really kind of annoying. I've never I, been a fan of Rockstar. <clears throat> Why I just, so? I don't. I always thought they got a pass. Most of their games are clunky as hell, and they got a pass because it's Rockstar. Yeah, they kind of modernize open world games quite a bit, and and with that comes with a whole lot of passes <laughs> on stuff. And like one of the passes yep. that I don't really like is like their need to sell me GTA 5 for a third <laughs> generation. It's the new Skyrim. <laughs> I hate it, man. I like like I liked GTA 5 when I beat it on 360. But I, I hate I bought that it. game now. I bought it on 360. I kid you not, when it first came out, I played it for 30 minutes. I took it and traded it in the GameStop the next day. Damn. You couldn't do it. No, and I tried. I really did. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to probably see you around on the battlefield in Halo, though. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Oh, yeah. You'll see me on Halo. You'll see me on Battlefield. You'll see me on Forza. Yeah, man. It's going to be fun. Um, I wouldn't mind racing you. Oh, seeing what your skills are like. See, yeah, seeing what your skills are like on the track. Oh, I'm just, not very good at racing. Um, just because I got 107 doesn't mean I'm great at the game. Oh, dude, I, I was like, <laughs> I was like ranked 300 on the last one. Jeez. Like, oh, out yeah, of I, what? I don't even know. I don't know how high it goes. I don't know. That sounds better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was way up there on four. 
That sounds way better than me. I was awful on four. I didn't really get too deep into it. I don't know what it, what it was, but England just, I don't know. It was just boring to me. It was really You didn't like the tea and crumpets. No, we actually talked about that on on, a, <laughs> on our live chat earlier. I was like, ah, I'm not really digging these crumpets. <laughs> yeah, that might be it. Because they don't know what a biscuit is. They think it's a cookie. Oh, man, what the fuck ever. But anyways, I'd like to thank you, Wilmy, for being here with me today. Um, it was a pleasure. Um, really stoked to have you here. Um, yeah. That's pretty much the gist of it, bud. Yeah, well, thank you for having me, dude. Absolutely. And if anybody check this out and you want to see some more content, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, they said, we said, this show right here is behind them sticks. I'm your boy, Ham Solo. Have a good day. <laughs>